Hello everyone, my name is Floyd Richmond. Today I'd like to show you how to create a quick arrangement, a hymn arrangement of a tune called Abide With Me for Brass Quintet, Woodwind Quintet, and String Orchestra. To start this process, I'm going to switch over to my internet browser. And the first thing I'm going to do is go to a site called cyberhymnal.org. Once I get to cyberhymnal.org, I'm going to scroll down here, find the index, ABC. I click on the letter A for Abide With Me. Scroll down here and find the hymn, Abide With Me. And this is the home page of Abide With Me. It uh, tells you who the author is, who the composer is, the years that this was done. There's a MIDI uh, version of this. There's a score version here as well. Now, unfortunately, the score software is not for any of the common programs like Finale or Sibelius. So at this point, the best way to get this information out of uh, here is to right click this word MIDI right beside 1861 here, choose download linked file, and that should put that into my download so that I can use it later. Since I'm going to want to create a piano score of this, uh, I'll just put the first verse in uh, as well. And I just copied those lyrics uh, so that I can use them later. Okay, I'm going to switch over to Finale. I'll show this first in Finale and then show it in Sibelius. I'm going to go to the File menu and I'm going to choose Open. I'm going to navigate to my Downloads folder and there is the Eventide file that I just downloaded from cyberhymnal.org. I'm going to tell it open. And this is a dialog box that lets you set your options for your MIDI file import. Uh, typically, you can just take the default options that are found here. But if you happen to find that the tracks are out of order, you can uh, come in and uh, try some of these different options. Uh, if the quantization doesn't work well, you can come in here and quantize to different values as well. I'm going to go ahead and tell it OK. And Yep, that actually looks pretty good. Now, there are a couple of tools in Finale for uh, quickly uh, cleaning the score up. So I'm going to type uh, Command A to select everything. Go to my Utilities menu and tell it to Fit Measures and Lock Layout with four measures on the system. So that was pretty quick. Uh, it uh, makes it look nice as well. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is take my Selection tool Double click here where it says title and type in abide with me. Um, if I wanted, I could repeat that process over here for the composer and for the arranger. There are several different ways to make these uh, unwanted elements that were imported with the MIDI file disappear. Uh, I'm just going to show you a quick and easy way. I'm going to take my staff tool, double click on the little handle that shows up for that particular item. I'm going to say I really don't want staff names to display in the score. I mean, this doesn't change the staff name. You could actually change it or delete it if you wanted to. But the shortcut that I'm taking here is just say, don't even show it in my score. So since it's not showing in my score, uh, it doesn't matter to me what it happens to be called. Uh, since I have my staff tool selected, I'm going to click to the left of my bottom staff, base clef staff, and drag its handle right above the clef sign a little further down. The, notice that this creates distance between all of the staves as I do this. And that's going to be useful because I'm about to put the lyrics into this uh, particular uh, file as well. Now, speaking of the lyrics, when I was on this page, I actually copied those lyrics into the computer's clipboard. Now, a uh, finale. Uh, actually needs you to hyphenate those lyrics and uh, I have found a very nice tool uh, using Google search I uh, just taught uh, uh, by searching hyphenate lyrics called lyric hyphenator by UCO Brennan and if I paste these lyrics in here and then tell it to hyphenate my text it immediately puts those hyphens into the computer, into the uh, text. I can now select that and copy it, and that makes it really easy for me to put it into Finale. Okay, let's show you how to put the lyrics into Finale. I'm going to take the Lyric tool here, go to the Lyric window, and paste those lyrics into that Lyric window. Now that I have them here, I can pretty much automatically assign them straight across the rest of the score by coming up to the Lyric menu 
and say click into the score or click assignment as it is called. Notice that it highlighted the word a uh, or the syllable a uh, for abide with me. If I click on this first note here, it puts it in a uh, and then I can continue to click abide with me. Now, if I had a melismatic passage, by the way, I do not in this particular hymn, then I could just skip over a couple of notes and then click in the note here. And uh, this me would already have the word extension on it going uh, as uh, far as it needs to. Since abide with me happens to be perfectly syllabic uh, and fast goes on this uh, note, I can hold down the option key and click it. And when I do, it puts all the rest of the words into the rest of the score uh, automatically for me. Now, I do have to say that I noticed that uh, some unusual things happened here. So even though this hyphenated the text for me, it didn't put the space between the syllables or between the sentences. So I'm going to undo that. Uh, before I go any further here, I'm going to come in here. Abide with me, fast falls the even tide space. The darkness deepens. I'm going to put a space in there just to make sure that's got Lord with me abide. I'm going to put a space right here. When other helpers fail and comforts flee, help of the helpless, so abide with me. Uh, so I can't tell you what the source of the missing uh, spaces between the sentences is, but uh, uh, nonetheless, that was quickly fixed. What I would like to do is take the syllable fast, so I just double click on it and then come back over here and click on this and there it puts it in at the correct place moves the selection over to false i'm going to hold the option key down now and click on falls the even tide the darkness deepens lord with me abide and you'll notice that it's coming out just exactly like i want it to when other helpers fail and comforts flee Help of the helpless, oh, abide with me. All right, so that's perfect. It's got all the syllables in, and uh, this is a nicely done piano score. Uh, I could do some more cleaning up, but I'm very happy with what I have here. Uh, okay, now I'd like to show you how to quickly arrange this piano score for brass instruments. I'm going to take my selection tool, type Command-A to select everything, Command-C to copy it. I'm going to go to the File menu, and tell it that I'd like a new uh, window with the setup wizard. I can just type command in and it will take me immediately there. And here's my brass quintet. I'll just go ahead and tell it that I'd like a brass quintet. Trumpet, trumpet, horn, trombone, tuba. Perfect. I will uh, click the next button. Type in abide with me. Could put in the composer, arranger, lyricist, and the copyright. This is public domain, by the way. But I'm just going to skip it for now. Uh, the uh, Time signature is 4 4. The key signature is the key of E flat major. I could specify a tempo marking. I could specify a pickup measure, but there is none, so I'm good there. I happen to know that the number of measures is 16, so I'll go ahead and specify that. And I'll just go ahead and finish that. And here's my brass quintet. Now, at this point, uh, I'm going to do something interesting. I'm going to come up to the document menu and say display this in concert pitch. Notice that the key signatures all change to E flat. The horn is a transposing instruments, the trumpets are transposing instruments, but when I told it to display in concert pitch, that put them all over in concert pitch. I'm gonna click on the horn part here and just uh, command V to paste that in there. Uh, you know what, I may, I may just do that on the uh, trumpet part here, command V. All right, so kind of interesting things happen because we've got treble clef information and bass clef information, but it doesn't really matter. These are here only temporarily. Uh, I have pasted this in, and that has uh, uh, selected the material that was just pasted. I can now go to the Utilities menu and choose a nice little option up here called Explode the Music. Now, here you probably have to change some things that uh, happened in this particular dialog box. I'm going to say split this soprano, alto, tenor, bass into four staves, one note per staff. Use these clefs, and this is what I had to change. Trumpet is treble, trumpet two is treble, horn is treble, trombone is bass, 
and a tuba is bass. So I had to make that 0, 0, 0, 3, 3 in order to get that correct. The rest of this is pretty much the same, except down here at the bottom, yours may come up uh, saying put these in new staves added to the bottom of the score. What you want to do is existing staves starting with trumpet and B flat. Tell it OK. And voila, that actually came out looking quite nicely. I do have to just draw your attention to a couple of errors that uh, were in the score. Uh, for example, here's a note that didn't get transcribed correctly. That note should surely be down here in the tenor or the bass. And notice that the tenor and the bass have some notes that are missing. Uh, down here is a, two, a trombone note that is missing. I could take time to correct all those things, but for the sake of just illustrating this quickly, I'm just going to move ahead here. So now I've got my trumpet in the correct range. That's the soprano part, alto part. Uh, I really would prefer to have the horn. Oh, that's concert pitch. So actually, I'm happy for the horn to play that. When I, uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn the uh, transposing score back on so that that part's not confusing. Up here in the document menu, turn back on display in concert pitch. And sure, that's very playable for a horn player now. Uh, this trombone music is also very playable for a trombone player. I'm going to click to the left of the trombone uh, staff. Option click, and that should put the tuba part in. And Finale is actually smart enough to know that the tuba player shouldn't be playing up here. It should be playing down here, so Finale automatically did the transposition for me. Uh, I would like to do just a little bit more cleanup of the score. Notice that as this score happens to be laid out, there's a lot of white space wasted over here. And uh, it's not terribly unattractive, but it actually might make more sense to go to the Utilities menu, choose Fit Music, lock layout with four measures per system and what that did was used both of my pages almost completely now i'm still not happy with the, how the spacing over here so i'll take my page layout tool come over here and drag this down a little bit and drag this down a little bit as well and so now the staff is starting to look pretty good so i could do some more cleanup on this but uh, i'm very happy with this particular brass arrangement of this uh, now, I wanted to say that I was going to show you quickly how to do a brass woodwind string and percussion arrangement. So I'm going to copy soprano, alto, tenor, bass uh, out of the score. I just selected those four staves and uh, hit Command C. I'm going to type Command N for a new score here. And I'm going to move, move down now to woodwind quintet and tell it next. Flute, oboe, clarinet, horn, and bassoon. Perfect. Okay. I'll type in the title, Abide With Me. Set my key signature to E flat major. I set my number of measures to 16 since I know what they are. And hit the finish button. And here's a woodwind quintet. And this time I'm going to paste soprano, alto, tenor, bass into the oboe area. And, um, and very interesting thing happened right there uh, about which I cannot explain and that is that this particular music um, uh, appears to be oh no it's correct it's correct it's perfect yeah okay good I was reading that like it was bass clef but it's a uh, treble clef so it's all good all right I'm gonna take this uh, oboe part here and select it, I click to the left hand side, I take my selection tool, I click to the left hand side of the staff uh, to select it throughout the score. I hold the option key down and click right here and it puts that entire part into the flute part. Okay, now just looking at this oboe part and this clarinet part too, I think it might be best if those are transposed down an octave. Uh, Finale actually does try to uh, get these in the correct spaces when you paste music into a score, but once in a while it doesn't uh, read your mind perfectly, and so you might need to do some additional adjustments. Uh, yep, now we're done with our woodwind uh, quintet. Uh, we might need to do some score uh, layout on this particular score just as we did before. I'll come up here, choose fit measures, lock measures for in a system. Uh, I'll also take my uh, page layout tool and drag some things around here. And also just go ahead and uh, show you all of these little errant notes that are sticking out and the rest and things like that. You need to go back and uh, move these low notes down into the correct uh, staves and that type of thing. Once again, not going to do that immediately now.
So now let's go to the, uh, we've uh, completed our woodwind arrangement. Let's go to our file menu, new, new document with setup wizard, or you can just type command in. And let's find a string orchestra. Yep, string orchestra. Tell it OK. Violin, violin, viola, cello, contrabass. Perfect. I'll hit the next button. Abide with me. Oops. Here we go. Hit the next button. Set the key signature to E flat. By the way, I do have to tell you, I'm probably going to make this a, uh, I'm going to transpose this later, but for right now, I'll just go ahead and keep it in E flat. Okay, and finale. We let it build that score. And now, uh, soprano, alto, tenor, bass. Yeah, that works. So I will uh, take my selection tool, click here, type command V, soprano, alto, tenor, bass. And I will also uh, select the entire cello line and option click here and put it in the bass line. And uh, yeah, the bass transposes by an octave. So even though the cello and the bass are reading the same part, they're playing in an octave all the way through. So that actually works. Okay, I now have my uh, string arrangement, my woodwind arrangement, my brass arrangement, and I also have a piano score. And that is the whole process for doing it in finale. Okay, uh, there are Sibelius users among us, and I am one of them as well. So let me just show the same process in Sibelius if I could. In Sibelius, when you launch it, it brings up the Quick Start menu. If you come to this Import tab over here, you should be able to find this. It says Open a MIDI file. Choose that, and it uh, brings a dialog box up for you. You can click on your Downloads folder, and just like before, you'll find the Eventide.mid and you can click that. Exactly as in Finale, you have a dialog box that says, um, how do you want to import this MIDI? Uh, there is one thing that is really important here, and that is that you must turn on Keep Track Order. If that happens to be off, which it probably is on your version of Sibelius, then turn it on, because if you don't, you're gonna have your um, bass clef notes above your treble clef notes. Um, all right, I think everything else uh, here is perfectly okay. But just like with Finale, if you uh, want to, you can come in here and uh, adjust your quantization rules. This says minimum duration is a 16th note. Uh, we could just as easily have set that to an eighth note. In fact, I'm not even sure Abide With Me uses anything faster than a quarter note. But I'm going to keep it set to an eighth note uh, just for practical purposes here. Tell it OK. And now we should see the score importing into Sibelius. Yes, and there it is. Now there are a couple of things here that uh, happen unusual in Sibelius. We'll just take them one at a time. Uh, you don't have to uh, hide these uh, staff names. You can just click on them and type the delete key and they will go away. And uh, you have to do this for the first system and you have to do it once for all subsequent systems. Uh, there is also a little unusual thing here with this bracket. If I click on that bracket to select it, it gives me a little invisible handle about right there. And if I drag it up, it drags it to the uh, span both staves. And that's pretty good as well. In Sibelius, you'll notice that I've got a, a treble clef sign here. If I triple click on this line, it should select this staff for the entire duration of the score. And then I can type Q for clef because that's a shortcut for clefs in Sibelius. It brings up my clef dialog box and I can click on the bass clef sign. And now I've got my treble clef and my bass clef. Uh, I'm going to type Command A to select everything just as I did in Finale. And I'm going to choose the Layout tab. And just as I did in, in Finale, I'm going to use what Sibelius calls Auto Breaks here. And I'd like to tell it, go ahead and break this every four bars and tell it OK. And so now I've got four bars on every system. Uh, you may need extra space between the staves. If you do, you just triple click this staff, staff. Click on the middle line to drag down a little bit so you're putting more space between all the staves. 
and uh, now you're ready to put your lyrics in now you remember in finale we had to uh, go and hyphenate those uh, words well the good news is Sabellius has got some very brilliant um, hyphenation rules built in I'm just going to come back to the abide with me website and copy this information into Sibelius, just the first line of lyrics there. Go back over to Sibelius, click on the first note, and type Command L for lyrics. Now I have a flashing cursor where the lyrics could be typed into the score, but since I copied them into the computer's clipboard, I can just type Command V, Command V, Command V, and continue to do this all the way through the score, and I'm just continuing to hit Command V very quickly. And I'm almost finished here. Uh, if I did have a melismatic part here, I could just skip over to this one and click Command L and start pasting from that point. But since this is completely syllabic, I'll go back to that note and type Command L and continue uh, with my Command V until I'm at the end of the score. And there you have it. I now have a very nice piano score for Abide With Me. Uh, like in Finale, I can double click on this with the selection tool and I change this title to the correct title. And I could use my text area here to choose the various styles of text so that I could put in composers and uh, lyricists and things like that if I wanted to. Okay, now in, uh, that's creating a piano score in Sibelius from a MIDI file. It's quick and easy. Uh, you will notice there are a few uh, mistakes that it made just exactly as Finale did. It didn't transcribe the MIDI file perfectly, and that's always going to be a bit of a problem, especially with complex MIDI files. Sooner or later, you do have to go back and correct those things, but for now, just to illustrate how to quickly create these arrangements, I'm going to skip that process. The f next thing I'd like to do is uh, triple click this top line here and type Command C. And I'm going to also, just like in Finale, type Command N to choose a new score. Brings up uh, what they call their Quick Start menu. And then I will scroll down here and choose a brass quintet, just like I did in Finale. I just had to find my uh, brass arrangements. Here it is, brass quintet. Um, I will click once on that. Uh, here it uh, lets me do the setup. Uh, the time signature is 4-4. Four, four. There is no pickup measure. There's no tempo. I need a uh, major flat key signature with three flats in it. And the title is Abide With Me. Just like in Finale, I could fill all this out if I wanted to. Or I can take the shortcut and just uh, go straight ahead and hit Create. And now I have Abide With Me in here. Now, as a reminder, uh, f uh, when I was uh, copying this over, I just took the top two lines first. I have found in Sibelius that uh, you're going to have much better success if you'll just take two lines at a time. And also I have to tell you at this point that Finale and Sibelius have a completely different uh, means of exploding these notes into the staff. So notice that what I've done here is I have selected in the first measure these two staves. In other words, I copied a staff with a soprano and an alto part on them, and now I have selected the two staves into which the soprano and the alto should be pasted. All right, at this point, I'm going to go up to the Note Input tab up here, and here's a button called Explode. You remember in Finale that was in the Utilities menu. But in Sibelius, it's here. I'm just going to click it. And notice it processes that, and it uh, puts it all in, puts the soprano in the top line and the alto in the bass line. Now, another interesting thing that happened here was uh, it also brought over the lyrics. And so I'm going to go to the Home menu and choose Filter, Lyrics, because the trumpet players don't really need the lyrics. Uh, once they are selected, uh, they're all blue there. I hit the Delete key, and the lyrics go away. All right, so I'll switch back over to my other score here, triple click my bass clef notes, command C to put them in the computer's clipboard, come back over here and remember I've got in the computer's clipboard tenor and bass. I will select the two staves that are going to receive the tenor and bass. I'll go to the note input menu and I will click explode. 
and voila it immediately puts those in there as well oh by the way you will notice that in this particular case uh, Sobias is also not doing a transposing score I can go to my home menu here and turn on transposing score and you'll notice the key signatures change the notes automatically transpose to the correct keys and everything is in the correct range which is pretty cool now to get my trombone part into the tuba part I'll triple click here option click here command down arrow to take that down an octave finale happened to guess that right about half the time it automatically transposed that to the correct octave uh, it guessed it wrong a few times as well and so now I have uh, more or less completed my brass quintet arrangement just to do some of the uh, same exact things I was doing in finale I'll go back to my layout menu <clears throat> type command A for select all and uh, over here is an auto breaks menu by the way the tools change their appearance depending on how wide your window is so I made that wider so I could see this particular auto breaks command I'm going to click on that and I'm going to say use auto system breaks every four bars and tell it OK and now Sibelius actually has uh, laid this out pretty nice as well I'm going to type command minus a few times so we can see the entire score and one of the things that you can see here was uh, if there was a place where I could tell it that I only needed 16 measures somehow I skipped that and so I have all these empty measures at the end of my staff in Sibelius you click in the first empty measure you shift click in the last measure and you have to hold the command key or on Windows control key down while you type the delete key and it says do you want to remove these bars from delete these bars from the score and you say yes and now we have the score laid out quite nicely uh, there might be just a little bit too much space between these particular staves and so there is an option that you can choose and it's kind of interesting uh, in Sibelius to make this uh, music fill a little bit more of that white space up here on the layout tab if you come to the normal staff size it says it's seven millimeters and if I make that just a little bit bigger you'll see the white space is starting to fill and the rest of the music is actually maintaining its uh, proportion pretty nicely so I actually took it all the way up to eight millimeters and it works pretty nicely uh, if there is uh, too much space between this staff and this staff you can just click in the staff on the center line and then just drag it up a little bit well it didn't actually come up you can click in this one and drag it down a little bit and so you can get them a little closer together and control your spacing in that particular manner same thing with this there's a little bit too much white space between this first system and the title so I'm just going to click on that middle line there and drag it up a little bit and then I'm also going to click on this uh, title and drag it down a little bit and so I have a little bit better spacing uh, you can adjust this uh, any way that you want to a general rule of thumb that I use is if it looks good it is good uh, and there are so many different uh, possibilities for things that uh, could go wrong in uh, the formatting of a score that you really do have to learn to trust your eye I think there are a lot of people that want to get their rulers out and measure is there exactly a half inch between the staff and a, exactly a half inch between that staff and I think for the purpose of notation engraving you really have to kind of put that kind of thinking out of your mind because once again there will be times when the flute just goes way above the staff in some part and then on the next one it doesn't nearly go as high above the staff or even out of the staff and so sometimes you need more space above a flute part and sometimes you don't need all that much and so uh, once again just look a, a, around your score see what you find that is uh, good or bad and then if it is if it looks good it is good and if it looks bad then fix it uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, create now my woodwind quintet. I'm copying and pasting soprano alto tenor bass right out of this file. I'll type command N for a new score. Up here is one called woodwind quintet. I will do exactly what I did before, which is scroll through each of these things and set the options as needed. I have to uh, make sure I'm in the key of E flat. I'm 
I could put my title in here is probably a good idea, especially in Sibelius, to go ahead and put in all of your titles and songwriters before uh, you create the score. Okay. Now remember, I have soprano, alto, tenor, bass in my clipboard. I will click on the oboe score in the first measure, type Command-V and paste it in. And you'll also remember that uh, what we decided to do was uh, to double the soprano on this one. Command C, uh, or just uh, triple click here and then option click here. And command up arrow to take the flute part up an octave. And now I have my woodwind uh, quintet done. I could do my score layout as necessary as well. In Sibelius though, I'm going to go ahead and uh, move to my uh, string orchestra. So I have to scroll through my templates until I find the uh, string orchestra. Here we go, string orchestra. Just like before, I'll set up all parts of my score. Uh, the main thing, now uh, this is interesting. Uh, when you write for strings, you can write in flat keys if you want to. And that's what I'm going to initially do here. <clears throat> but I'm also going to illustrate uh, how to transpose here. So I think I'll click in violin one and I'll paste that in. Okay, I see that I made a mistake there. I have to go back over to my woodwind, get my soprano alto tenor bass. Command C to copy that. Come back over to my string quartet, quintet. Type in soprano alto tenor bass. It put it in correctly. I will now triple click on the cello part and option click to copy and paste it into the bass part and command down arrow to put it in the correct octave. So, yep, now I've created a string arrangement. Uh, now, about the transposition, I should just go ahead and show you this real quickly. To transpose in Sibelius, escape three times, hit Command sheet, uh, T for uh, transpose, hit the uh, Yes button to select everything in the score, and then here it says transpose by key down to the key of D. Now, by the way, this uh, string ensemble will not be playing with that brass ensemble. And then up here is an option that says turn on or off, transpose key signatures. And if you turn that on, this will be all in one pass. And uh, this is a nice string arrangement for very young strings here. Uh, violin one, violin two, viola, cello, and bass can all play this with no problem. Uh, if you have uh, older strings, then obviously you could have left it in the key of E flat. Uh, but if you uh, don't have older strings, then putting it in the key of D is a very good idea. And uh, you, uh, if you have intermediate strings, you might even want to do some things like uh, take your violin, uh, viola, and uh, violin one, two, and uh, viola and uh, select those three staves and uh, command up arrow to transpose just those three parts up an octave. Uh, so uh, it's up to you. If you wanted to keep this one down in the octave as well, then uh, you could uh, do that as well. Uh, just a quick reminder, um, while well, your strings are non-transposing instruments, so this transposing score button really doesn't do anything at all. But uh, if you were working with transposing instruments, it would be there. Uh, in uh, Finale and Sibelius on the Macintosh, if you need to create a PDF version of this, you just go to your File tab and you hit the Print button. And if you're in Windows, you can click on this and choose your Microsoft Windows uh, PDF writer and that will save your score as a PDF file. Uh, if you are in the Macintosh, uh, if you just tell it to use the uh, oh, operating systems print uh, dialog box, then in the lower left hand corner, and I'm just going to try this and see if it works, I'm going to hit the uh, print button. Yeah, it didn't print using the. Uh, it did not print using the uh, computer systems dialog box. I'm going to type Command P and see if that does. 
it actually just started printing using my printer. Here's the dialog box I'm looking for. Use OS dialog box. And then up here in the left hand corner there's an the option that says save as a PDF. And this is uh, available on every print screen for the standard dialog box for uh, Windows. I'm going to call this abide with me strings. Put it on my desktop and save it. And now I've created a PDF version of this. The great thing about PDF files is anybody can read them on any device. And so uh, definitely a good idea to uh, save your files not only as a Sabaya score or a Finale score, but also to print them so that you can email them to people who do not have uh, Sabaya or Finale and so they can see them quickly as well. Okay, that's a quick and easy method of creating uh, hem arrangements using Finale and Sibelius.